Welcome to the Fresh RN Podcast. The information contained in this podcast is meant to supplement your existing knowledge and not replace it. Always refer to your state board of nursing, standards of care, and respective institutions' policies to guide your practice. All identifying patient details have been changed to protect their privacy and remain compliant with the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. Thanks, nurses. Stay fresh. Hey, just so you know, these all things are dying here. We are at war, and we are an <laughs> army. Oh, yeah. It's about turn 25. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying. I love how you just brought whale culture into the nursing floor. Pick out your pods. So we were, si- we're sacred cows and we're whales. That's how we communicate. We like do like weird whale calls <laughs> down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she needs left. Okay. <laughs> I know that call, guys. Welcome to the podcast. I am Katie Cleaver. And I'm Melissa Stafford. And I'm Elizabeth Mills. And I'm Kiernan McMahon. Thank you for joining us for the Fresh RN podcast. And today's episode, we're going to talk about teamwork. So I think in nursing school and in orientation, it's like, yeah, teamwork. That's how you get things done. Teamwork. Yeah, work as a team. But then it's like, how does that practically look at the bedside? Um, Because it can be nice to say that. But unless you have some like practical steps, practical explanation of what it actually looks like, um, it's really hard to emulate that. And I feel like you see when you're in a good function, a well-functioning team, it is amazing. And it doesn't matter how bad your day might be. If you've got a good team, mm-hmm. it it's not so bad. It does make world. all the difference. Yeah, you look at the schedule, you see who's on the schedule, like, I'm going to have a good day. It doesn't matter how bad the patients are, I'm going to have a good day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So... What it looks, what is it, what, when you guys, um, when I say, do you have good teamwork, you know, or what does good teamwork really look like um, for the bed in inpatient nurse? Well, I think that it's, um, I think that it's different. I think it's more challenging for new nurses to mm-hmm. kind of get the hang of teamwork because they're kind of overwhelmed by everything, you know, like just trying to do yeah. their own work, much less let them work on um, or try to help other nurses Mm because they're it's just you you have a tendency to make sure that you're doing everything right and that um, you get everything done and that you do everything perfectly and you kind of get this kind of silo mentality and it's most of the time especially in new grads it's not meant to be that way but what teamwork is is really helping the whole unit looking at the unit as a whole as opposed to your role individually Mm -hmm. and being aware of what's going on in the unit overall not not necessarily the the exact specific issues with the patients but rather how are your coworkers doing today Mm -hmm. because if you've got a light assignment then you should be taking the proactive approach of helping out your fellow nurses that (coughs) don't have a light assignment Correct. Um, Because if I'm if I'm drowning, I need help, and I may not even be able to recognize that somebody else is less busy than I am because I'm so involved in what's going on with me. So probably you know the best teamwork for me is somebody that um, the best here now, mind Mm -hmm. you, the best is someone that knows what I need without me even having to say it. But it takes a while to get there. Oh, it takes a long time to get there. Yeah, yeah. I like how you said that it's like not having that silo mentality of like, okay, my patients are good. I got a good day. It's like, no, wait, the, the, the team is what matters. The, what matters is the whole, everyone's having an okay day. And if someone's having, has an easier assignment then that person's helping out with the people that have the heavier assignment and it's not, the goal isn't to clock into work and to do the least amount of work possible. Um, and it's not a competition of who does more work and who does less because that should ebb and flow. You know, some days someone's going to have a harder day, but it shouldn't, t- or a tasky or a more challenging day, but it shouldn't be that bad because other people should be helping. And then, and then they know that when they have an easier day that they're helping out other people. Um, one of the good examples I think of how, you know, when teamwork goes well is, um, let's say you get an admission. Um, when we, when I started working on the neuro ICU that I, I no longer work there, but 
one of the things I immediately noticed was when there was a new admission to the neuro ICU, the primary nurse actually did the least amount of work because all of the other, um, not every single person, because you have to you know, be watching the other patients, but if, if we knew a new patient was coming in, it was like, oh, wait, we got to help out this nurse for a few minutes. So uh, someone was getting, you know, getting the weight. Someone was getting the blood sugar. Someone was getting pulled, them pulled over <coughs> in the, um, the system. And the, the, what the primary nurse had to worry about was doing their assessment. And that was the priority. And then everyone else was kind of helping out doing that other stuff, you know, releasing the orders, putting the family in the waiting room, you know, like that kind of stuff. So it was like, it wasn't like, oh my God, I have a new patient. I have 900 things to do. And I can't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, It works out so much better for the patient and everybody, if you can just come in and do a little bit. And I was really blown away at how just well that went. And it was like, it didn't matter who it was or if everyone liked this nurse or this nurse. And the one that was well liked was the only one getting help. It was like, no, like, oh, we have a new patient coming in. I got, the, I got the blood sugar. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll get the weight. All right, I'll, I'll pull them over in the computer. And then the, the primary nurse was doing their assessment. It was done very promptly. Yeah, and the nurse being able to do their assessment first, and then can focus on documenting that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it really makes a, a huge difference because. And it's not just doing it. So it's not just doing the blood sugar. It's not just doing the weight or the height or, you know, whatever screening has to be done. It's charting that you've done it. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I get the weight, I put the weight in the computer. If I do the temperature, I put the temperature in the computer. And when our team was working like that, it was also that somebody was releasing the orders and looking at what needed to be done right then. Mm-hmm. So if they had stat labs, the stat labs got drawn. Yeah. If they needed fluids right away, the fluids got hung. And it got, you know, it got labeled of the date and time that it was hung and it was scanned in the computer and, you know, all those things were done. So truly and honestly, my focus, if I was receiving that patient, was just the assessment and charting that initial assessment. And it really does make a huge difference. You know what you need when you're admitting someone. So you do those things for the other person. Mm -hmm. Like I can't, you know, Katie, if you're admitting, I can't. Well, I mean, I could do the assessment, but you're responsible for charting that. So you need to do your own assessment. But what I can do is I can get the weight and put it in the computer. And I can look at your orders and say, hey, um, we need to get this patient's coag sent off to the to the lab because they might have to go to the OR. Or, you know, like I can help guide that stat, those stat tasks that I can do even though I'm not the primary nurse. Mm-hmm. And the goal in that is that you have more time to focus on your patient and get it done so that you're not behind for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. And and think about what kind of a uh, picture that paints for the um, the family and the patient. Oh, man. All right. Like, they know what's going on. Like, they got stuff done quickly. And two, working on the floor also, that looks very similar, except there's just not as many tasks. You know, okay, we'll get the weight and um, make sure the bed's zeroed and get the weight, get them pulled over, uh, make sure they've got, you know, their – know where their call bell is they got their water thing and the, and releasing orders and stuff too uh, maybe they're not maybe getting the telemetry box and hooking them up or you know whatever that might look like um, but so that you know the primary nurse is doing the things that only the primary nurse can really do mm-hmm. um, and and it doesn't take that long to go in and do a wait and to go in and help boost the patient make sure they're good to go and if you you know and if everyone just expects to oh you got a new patient and you see him rolling down the down the hallway you don't need to get report on him you just as, as a helping nurse you can just go in and say hey let me i'll help you boost him i'll get this i'll do you know what i mean mm-hmm. and you've taking what a minute or two and it makes the biggest difference and you can so the thing about an admission is it's a standard process yes every time so a lot of times you know the team kind of helps come in and kind of do these separate tasks we might delegate to each other okay you know, I'll do the blood sugar, you get the weight, you set the monitor up, et cetera. It's a standard process. What makes teamwork a little more challenging is when, you know, you see that one nurse who's really struggling and, and are very busy and you're not so busy mm-hmm. to kind of be able to predict what, um, what they need. So you still have to communicate, but I also know, well, I can look on that patient's chart of the, that nurse and see, okay, well, it looks like she's got meds that she hasn't given yet. Yeah. So go in and say, you need me to pass meds. You need me to do some eyes and nose for the hour. You need to turn, you know, that kind of thing. But it's, it's, it's not, um, there's, there's always some standard something 
that you can do that you can do Mm -hmm. um if somebody is behind and I uh my last hospital had a great way to quickly communicate that um basically you yeah red yellow green so if you're red you're dying yep if you're yellow you're you're okay (laughs) you're not wonderful but you're okay and if you're green you are available to help other people and you go help the reds and then you say hey what color are you what can i do to get you to green and it's a quick way to communicate how quantify how overwhelmed you are and how much support you need as opposed to well um i just got this admission and i have all this stuff i have to do but i'm not sure you know what i mean it's, it's just a quick way to quantify and then you can say um can you grab these labs for me or um can you go give this protonics in this room or boost this guy or whatever um, and then it's a super quick way to quantify and communicate um, and assess, hey, what can I do to get you green? Uh, you know, like, I love, love I that. I do, too. And we don't, we don't use that enough where we are right now. But, um, yeah, I've always liked that process. Another thing I think that's essential about teamwork is learning personalities. Um, we're all not this cookie-cutter person and nurse. We all have our own strengths and our own weaknesses. And I think a good team is very aware of that um, and very aware of how to leverage that. So if I know uh, my coworker hates the the emotional conversations and dealing with that, you know, and he's got to deal with that, maybe I can, there's some way I can help or go into the room with it. I don't know. You know, like, or if I've got the nurse that is great at, I don't know, having tough conversations and we, we're having a staffing issue and leveraging that and say, hey, you're good at this. Can you do this? And then I'll do, I don't know. It's just like a way to learn other people and um, leverage their their strengths and, and, their, and help balance out their weaknesses to support each other. So you don't feel like you're all alone. You know, so maybe some nurses are maybe more experienced with the synch- synchronized cardioversion and you leverage their knowledge and, and value them and, and pull them in on that um, when there's something else that maybe you know more about. Like I'm starting on this new unit. I'm anticipating, you know, maybe I'll, I'll have some of that neuro expertise I can bring, but I haven't done synchronized cardioversion since I worked there six years ago. I'm going to need help with that. You know, like helping know other people and learn their personalities. Um, and, and also just I don't know like learning about people and and their tendencies and not expecting them to be kind of like I don't know like if you know some if there's someone who there's there's people that are go-getters right there are people that are going to take the initiative um to identify what the needs are right then you're going to have those people that are like kind of in tune with that but they're not super aware of that and then you're also going to have those people that are just checked out and I'm not going to expect this checked out they're person. They're kicking it at the nurse's They're station. kicking it at the nurse's <laughs> station. But I'm not going to expect this person who is already kind of like super relaxed to all of a sudden be aware of all these things. I'm going to use direct communication say, hey, can you go do this? Can you go do this? Like there's certain nurses that I know that whenever they get a break, their instinct isn't to go check on other people. It's to go sit at the nurse's station. So I know, hey, I'm going to use direct communication with that person. Say, hey, can you go do this? Because I know it's... When you go talk to the person, they're more than willing to help, but they're not someone that realizes that they need to go assess to see what needs to be helped. You know what I mean? Not to enable that behavior, but I'm not going to get bent out of shape if I can't fix that overnight. You know what I mean? So learn. I think learning people is a big thing, and that's going to take a lot of time. Um, so I don't know. Learning behaviors, personalities. So as someone who's wanting to be – like this proactive team player person, because in the end, it's the best yes. um, for the the yeah. group, yeah. Uh, for the unit in general. How <laughs> how do you go about trying to learn other people while you're on on the floor with them? Well, I think it's. Uh, does someone else want to answer? I think when you work with people enough, you do learn. But you know what? If I can't read their mind, I go up and I say, "What can I help you with?" Yes. Yeah. Um. And I'm I am I am a classic person that if I've got a lot going on, I am not much of a delegator. Mm. So I find that um, and people know this. So they'll be like, what do you need help with? And I'll be like, gosh, I've got this, this and this do. I don't know what I need to tell you. You know, I don't know what to tell you to help me with, because honestly, a lot of times I want to do it myself because I want to do it my way. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like but. Um, so it's really refreshing when someone's like, okay, why don't I just do this first? I'll do this. 
And then in a lot of ways, I'm like, okay, yep, that'll, that'll help me out. Um, so I think you, it takes time to learn personalities, but the thing is you have got to be, I don't care if you're a new nurse or not, you do have to be somewhat aware of everything going on in the unit. Maybe yes. not specifically, but you know, when someone's running around and, and busy, I mean, they've, they're, they, they have a change in their walk, their pace, their face. They might be huffing and puffing, you know, or you can learn these non-verbal behaviors. Well, and also not just how that nurse is acting, but also just having a slight awareness of the other patients in the unit. So, yeah, I know I'm pretty, I'm pretty focused on the, the needs of my patients, but I also kind of want to know, like, is there one or two that doesn't look so. so hot that we're a little worried about? It's helpful to be aware of the big picture and having a team huddle in the beginning of your shift so you can be aware of somebody who's really sick a good leader would initiate that and say hey this just so you know this i'm kind of we're kind of worried about this one or whatever um you know just so you can have it on your radar but i do think there is a balance too with like it's helpful for you to be able to notice when people are like struggling but also to not if you expect people to intervene for you like and notice a lot of us are pretty not aware of other people. We can think we're, man, I'm running around like crazy and no one's offering to help. Well, ask. You know what I mean? Um, I hate for someone to get upset and think the team doesn't care about them when they genuinely didn't know that, that they needed help. Because um, some people are pretty good at looking like they got stuff together. Or maybe, um, I don't know, maybe they're, or maybe I'm just so involved with what I'm doing. And maybe it's stuff that I'm just trying to get ahead. And I, w- I could much rather help you, but I just didn't realize that you, you had some stuff going on, but I would much rather do that than, you know, catch up on this charting that is, is I need to get done, but not right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really, it is a, a mentality that has to be um, learned mm-hmm. individually. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you talk, you ask about ways to get to know personalities, and some of that is um, looking to who your mentor was your preceptor was during orientation and hopefully during orientation you get to uh, experience some of that um you know it is having conversations with people that isn't necessarily regarding work um yeah you know absolutely. if you've got five minutes ask how their kids are doing or what'd you do this weekend or you know whatever because sometimes that is what really breaks the ice for new people and and people who've been there for a while um and i do think it is uh it is something that you do have to have the self-awareness um, uh, of making an effort on your own part to look around. Mm-hmm. Is there an alarm that keeps going off? Yeah. And if there is an alarm that keeps going off, investigate that. You know, do you need help titrating this drip? Or can I give something PRN for you? Or um, I noticed the heart rate's up really high. Do you need me to call somebody for you? Or, you know, those kinds of things. Is, is those alarms in the unit can help you mm-hmm. decide where to go first. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell you personally, like, if my patient's alarms keep going off, I'm having a really bad day because mm-hmm. I do not like my patient's alarms to go off. Mm-hmm. It makes me crazy. Um, but, and I'm, like, much like Elizabeth, I have a hard time delegating too, and I think some of it's because... In the unit that I work, we have a lot of new people, and I really enjoy new people, but I am very much a control freak. So, you know, I want to make sure that things are done in a certain way, and I want to make sure that they're done when, in reality, I need to let go of that and let someone else help me. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I have a tendency of when I get busy, I get quiet, not because I'm trying to exclude anybody. It's just because I'm so focused on getting things done. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And so if Elizabeth knows that about me, then Elizabeth will come to me, and she'll say... I can see you got something going on. You know, what can I do for you? But I really liked what she said as far as uh, checking the chart. And, and and the best teamwork, and it takes time to get there. You're not going to go to work tomorrow and be the perfect team ma- teammate. But the best teamwork is really learning to anticipate what needs to be done for the patient. And it's not always about asking them. I mean, it is about asking the nurse to a certain degree. But sometimes nurses don't know how to delegate or what to delegate. That is harder than it sounds. It, yeah, it is. It, you know, am I okay delegating my blood cultures? Does this person know how to draw blood cultures correctly? Um, Yeah. You know. Like, I need to draw a sodium level on a patient. Well, I need to trust that that nurse is going to stop the the 3% that's going into my PICC line Mm -hmm. 
and waste enough so that my specimen is not, you know, the the the, the result is not skewed because the right process wasn't done. Right. Well, and I've it's also little things like that. Well, and then you add on to that, you're so far behind. You quickly need help. But I don't know about you if you remember this, but I'd have times where I was so overwhelmed with how many things I had to get done. As an experienced nurse, this is not as a new nurse, I'm like, I have so many things to do right now, I don't even know what to do first. <laughs> yeah. And I would be like, Stafford, tell me, here's what I have to do, and I don't I don't even know like what to delegate. Yeah. Help me out. And so, okay, and, and you do that in less than like three minutes. Yeah. Um, but okay, it Katie, dele- you go th- do this and this, and I'll go do this and this. Yes, yes. And having that camaraderie is important, and it doesn't happen overnight. You have to learn to trust each other. But, you know, knowing that I can go to my, you know, our computer program has a work list. So the, it keeps track of meds that are upcoming and labs that are upcoming and tasks that we need to do. And if I see that Elizabeth's behind and I go to the computer and see that she has meds that are given, um, you know, I will I can go to her and say, hey, Elizabeth, I'm going to go get these meds for bed number 10 for you. Is that OK? And she can say yay or nay. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, I notice that you've got some blood to draw. Can I go do that for you? Mm-hmm. And so that the nurse is aware of what you're offering. And it also takes kind of that um, weight off their shoulders as trying to figure out what to delegate first. Mm-hmm. And that does come from more experienced nurses. But it ha- when new, new nurses come in, the experienced nurses need to, to model that behavior pretty well. Because if you've got experienced nurses that don't do teamwork well, then it takes longer for the newer nurses to learn to, de- to develop that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it really is anticipating what the other person needs. And, and I remember years ago when I was a weekender and I worked with the same two nurses every single weekend. Mm-hmm. And we didn't even have to talk. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew what they needed. They knew what I needed. And it got done. But we worked together every single shift that we worked. And that was our normal routine. So um, I did I get behind? Sure. But it didn't happen that often. And I never really felt vastly overwhelmed because I knew that they were there and they were taking care of stuff and I knew it was done right Mm -hmm. and that's the other thing when you are the one that is helping you need to make sure that it's done correctly and you need to make sure that it's done um, uh, thoroughly I guess so for example if um, you're hanging IV fluids right so if, if somebody's hanging IV fluids for me do they look at the tubing to make sure the tubing's in date if it's brand new do they date the bag and the tubing um, did if they've got a central line, did they put the proper um, alcohol caps on on the ports? Did they document and scan it in the MAR so it's done? Um, if somebody's putting in an IV for me, did they go to the chart and actually put the IV in the chart? Or yeah, or do I have to do that now too? Or do I have to do that because I'm probably not going to do that till the end of my shift? So then I'm like, I don't know what time they put in an IV. I don't even know what size IV they put in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if they give my meds for me down a feeding tube did they document how much flush and how much meds and you know all those things so it's not just doing the tasks it's documenting that they were done and and i don't know elizabeth i don't know if you agree or katie if you agree that you know that's a big part of it too it's not just having the tasks that are done that's helpful and it is helpful but it's incredibly helpful when it's done and it's documented yeah i remember Mm -hmm. one time i was pretty overwhelmed and um a nurse came like did rounds to see if we needed any help i was like I have got to cover the blood sugar in this room, but I just don't have time to get in there. Um, The blood sugar was this. They need this much insulin. I assumed that this nurse was going to check the chart, scan the patient, do the appropriate things. No, they just drew it up and gave it to him. Mm -hmm. What? (laughs) What? Like, so it's like, (laughs) (laughs) an experienced nurse, too. Like, that's not okay. Like, Mm -hmm. I might as well just do it myself then. Right. Because then you have to go back and do it anyyway. And I didn't see her give the insulin. Like, you know, like, that was so, I was so mad about that. But, um, but yeah, so a a really important aspect of this is developing trust. Like, let's think about it from a non-clinical perspective. You have a really important report due to somebody who is above you. And you have a big section of it and you're going to delegate it to someone else. Are you okay with like, like you have to trust that person, right? You And you, and, and that's just like a report. What if you're asking someone to do like, you know, titrate your drips and like stuff that t- physically touches a patient. Like those things should be, this, the patient stuff should just be way more important than like a report or a, you know what I mean? Like to, it's like kind of compare it. You have to develop trust. You have to earn trust. Um, and demonstrate that you're going to follow through on things and do them appropriately. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna give 
um, a blood pressure med- you're going to go give meds and you're get one of those meds as a blood pressure medicine well I need to know that you're going to look at my blood pressure and make sure that I can give it right then right 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 so um, or if I'm I don't know I keep thinking about or insulin for your point I, can you check and see what the blood sugar is? I need to know that you're going to look at my blood sugar, look at my order, and then scan the medication, all those things, because it, it all really matters. And, and, and when you have those teammates who do that and who you trust, it, is, it makes life so <gasps> much better. Like, and knowing that I can look at that person and just tell them the, the, the hardest thing that I have to do, and I know that they're going to go do it, and they're going to do it right. Mm-hmm. And when you want to develop teamwork you have to be the person that's going to be that thorough nurse Mm -hmm. and you're you do have to earn that trust you know but you you have to demonstrate that you're going to go through all that and yeah why should someone trust you if you can't like put in the the work to earn it you know Mm -hmm. what i mean um and two if if people are doing if you're delegating something to say hey can you go grab do this blood sugar now granted this this nurse was like swung by the unit wasn't in our unit but it's like if it's someone who's still in the unit like hey i know you got that uh you emptied that full acute chart for me real quick like do it in a real casual like hey can you and and have them finish the task yeah like don't just get mad that they didn't do it hey i know you got that temp can you can you chart it for me real quick Mm -hmm. you know or whatever it is Mm -hmm. um because i think that's that follow-up is really important because if they maybe they forgot or maybe they, they just assumed you'd rather chart it yourself when realistically, like, no. But, you know, like, when you can have that circle back and the non-threatening, really casual, hey, can you do this real quick? You know, and it's not a big deal, but it's just like, I need you to do that. Um, I think that, and that sets the expectation, you know? Um, and I think that's really important. And on the flip side, I think it's important as experienced nurses with our new nurses you're gonna have some new nurses who want to do it all on their own and don't want to seem behind and overwhelmed they want to be superheroes and then you go and you check their chart and their meds are two hours three hours past due Mm -hmm. and they're and you're like okay what what can I help you with it's I think I think experienced nurses have a little bit more responsibility one to demonstrate what teamwork looks like absolutely and two to, to kind of check in with the with the newbies and make sure that they're even though they look like they're not falling apart maybe they are falling falling yeah apart. falling yeah. apart <laughs> following apart falling mm-hmm. apart um or maybe the new nurses have questions and they're too afraid to ask you know yeah i think it's important with a when you have a team a well-functioning team communicate even the best communicators miscommunicate so you want to have ha- foster this environment of open communication like um that you can ask please ask me questions or uh and i'm gonna and Maybe you're the experienced nurse and I'm the newer nurse. I'm sorry. I'm the experienced nurse and you're the newer nurse. I'm going to show that I value your expertise by asking you a question. Maybe I know the answer. Or maybe I know where to get it. But I think it's helpful to like validate someone's knowledge by asking their opinion. I think that's a good way for experienced nurses to build up new nurses is to ask them, proactively ask them for their opinion, ask them for their help, um, and just create this um, you know, environment where, hey, we all are okay with asking questions, admitting we don't know something, and part of that is not cutting people down when they, hey, what is that? I don't, wait, what am I, why am I doing that? Like, I don't understand why this is ordered when maybe it's obvious. Wait, why do they have an INR ordered when, or why do they have Coumadin ordered when they're getting heparin? That seems like too much. Why? But ha- being okay to ask that mm. and, and, and the experienced nurse not taking that as a, as an opportunity to judge or belittle or make people feel stupid. And we have to hold each other accountable. And an example is an experienced critical care nurse is coming to work in a unit and her previous roles have been in a float pool as a traveler. So she's never essentially belonged to any, an exact unit for an extended period of time. And she comes in and she's, she, st- she stays with her own two patients. She doesn't really engage in a lot of conversation with the other team, and that's fine. Like, some people just don't want to get yeah. into a lot of talk with other people. But she's the first one out at the end of the shift while everyone else is going to be behind. And, you know, how do you – you kind of have to hold her accountable and, and or him or her and say, you know, hey, you know, I, I see you're, you know, at the desk. Are you busy? I, re- I could really use some help with this. Mm-hmm. And instead of 
it, it has to be an entire team that kind of comes and kind of says, you know, can you help us out a little bit? Or, oh, are you getting ready to leave? I, I just got, you know, could you do this one thing? I'm going to be here for another 45 minutes. Um, and also um, kind of engaging in some difficult conversations, saying, hey, can you just make sure everybody's doing all right? Especially if you're a lead nurse and you've noticed that that one particular nurse really hasn't been helpful at yeah. the end of the day. Be like, hey, could you just check in and make sure everybody's okay before you go or – I don't know. You kind of you kind of have to tell them this is how w- our team works here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the way that you, that and it's important that that behavior is not accepted, but not you know maybe if someone has been a float nurse and a and a traveler, you you kind of are kind of on your own yeah, a lot, they and feel that's probably that mentality that they've had. But hey, homie, we're a team. We're gonna. This yeah. is how we work, and the way that this works is, you know we check in with each other frequently throughout the shift and that's a key point throughout the shift um not just at the end not just (laughs) at the end because at the end all we're doing is trying to chart right right so i know if i just go to you at the end of the shift i know there's nothing that i have to do for you because you're just sitting down to chart all the stuff you did all day yeah so during the day is when all the work needs to be done so if it's you know 12 o'clock noon and you notice that you're ready to go to lunch and everybody else is going crazy, then perhaps we need to check in with those nurses and see what can I do for you so you can go eat? Yeah. You know, and it's not, you know, nobody can chart for me, but they can give meds. They can draw labs. They can put in feeding tubes. They can hang new tube feedings. I mean, there's a lot of things that they can do. And if you're not checking in during the shift, at the end of the shift, there's really probably not going to be anything that they need because they just have to chart. It's yeah. in the middle of the day that, that they need help. So, yeah. so you're talking about how you deal with people that are not used to being part of a team. How do you deal with people that aren't team players and maintain a positive, good attitude for the rest of the group while those people are not necessarily maybe going to be like, We give oh, them no. the hardest assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh yeah, like no. this sort of. I'll I'll catch up and become a team player, to learn how to be a team player. The pe- there are inevitably in any any field, any group of people, there are going to be people yep. that just are never going to be a team player. And how do you? So you keep you nagging mean? them, be like, hey, can you help me turn? Yeah. I mean, well, if they're going to sit there and say no, then you then you're like, you 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 take it up the chain of command. Yeah, there. I mean, hopefully, and in the ideal situation, and I say ideal because we all know that this doesn't always happen, but when someone is identified as kind of being in that role, that there's leadership sh- hopefully noticing, hopefully being brought in, not in a talking about them kind of way, but a hey. And leadership maybe, n- and I'm not saying, yeah, I'd pull the director in, but if you've gotten like an assistant manager, say, hey, you know what? I'm kind of noticing a trend. It could be helpful to utilize some support from you in a, in a hey, just so you know, this is how things are done here. And we want want to make sure, not in a, I'm not, I'm, not having a, I'm not having a crucial conversation. I'm not having a disciplinary thing, but it's like, hey, you know what, this is, I know you've been a float nurse for a while, and, and, and I get that, but I just need you to know that this is, I want you checking in throughout the shift, and this, and this is just the way this job is. It's not like we're trying to put more work on you, and oh, it's frustrating that, I uh, why do I always have to help, other, help out other people? But it's like, no, th- that's the way teamwork works. Some days you're going to have easier days, and some days someone else is, and maybe they're just not aware of that, but I think it helps to have that accountability from each other, but then also having that accountability in from the, from management, but not in that way where it's like, oh, they're getting disciplinary. It's, hey, I'm supporting you as you acclimate into becoming a team player. You know, those those are two really different, like I'm gonna penalize you for not being a team player versus, hey, I'm gonna, I'm identifying that you're not where you need to be team player wise, but I'm, we're gonna grow, you're gonna grow into that and we're gonna support you in that because that's just the way this unit functions. And I feel like if they don't adapt to that team culture, they're not gonna stay for very long because they're gonna see that their colleagues are holding them accountable. Yeah, the colleagues have to hold like, hey, can you come do this? Can you, you know, and it's, and, and truly if you're in management, it's like, if we've got someone who's not pulling their higher, I don't know, higher, slow, fire, fast. And if your <laughs> unit can participate in kind of out of, out of the office per se, unit activities like uh team we just building. had a w- team building stuff like we just had a neuro bowl a few several oh, months those ago are fun. and we all got to somehow we found staff to manage the unit and a bunch of us got to go to another hospital and do a little like jeopardy game um which we did very well in so i think we did well we anyway anyway <laughs> we're smart did. i, I think it was a lot of fun because we got to kind of joke and 
Patty, you know, it was it was good. It was a team building exercise, and that I think helped. You don't want to immediately run to management, but you don't want to let bad feelings towards someone fester. No. Too exactly. Long. So, like, and sometimes that happens far too often. It, it is hard. It is. How do you balance? I think I it's know. a it's a balance. Uh, the way that you balance it, I think, is because you don't want it to turn into gossip. You don't want it to turn it. We're talking about this chick that's not doing what she's supposed to do. We, you don't want that. Mm-hmm. But you also want to like. I think it's all about your delivery and the way you talk about it. Say, you know, hey, um, if you're talking to your other team members, hey, Carrie is u- not used to kind of being on a team. I think we all need to make sure throughout the day. If you need if you need some help and she ha- seems to be caught up, please ask her utilize to help her. you. Utilize her. Um, that's the way this works. That's why, why we, you know, and, and having that conversation peer to peer. Hopefully, you have informal leaders on your unit that can kind of facilitate that conversation in an appropriate way and then also um lightly pull in management it's like hey i'm not like trying to like tell on somebody but it'd be cool to have some reinforcement and not discipline but reinforcement in the whole aspect of us being a team um again that's ideal we know that doesn't always happen and it's challenging when it's a large unit it is um so you almost have to pick out your pods per se and kind of help your group around surrounding you mm-hmm. um yeah because it's not like if you're in room one and two you can't go check on 20 room 25 and 20 yeah right love how you just brought whale culture into, <laughs> into the nursing floor <laughs> pick out your pods <laughs> they used to be called that for yeah, us it yeah was pods. <laughs> like you had your group of patients and your n- nurse next to you your group of patients and that's a pod Mm-hmm. So we were sit, we're sacred cows and we're whales. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> really? <laughs> Thanks Yay, for that. large <laughs> animals. <laughs> I was gonna make a whale call, but I won't. Well, that's what I was <laughs> thinking <laughs> of. I was like, oh, I, f- I forgot yeah. that a group. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like that's how we communicate. We like do like weird whale calls down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she needs labs. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know that call, guys. <laughs> so teamwork. Um, so yeah, so I think I think it's important to prioritize this and it's ideal, I think, if the informal leaders and the formal leaders can prioritize this and they should, I think, be the spearheading ones with um, um, with the new newbies and, and maybe the people that are, are important members of the team, but they're not someone that's going to take on like a little bit of a leadership kind of thing. Not a formal one, but informal. Um, so ideally, they're the ones kind of spearheading it. And it's hard it's hard to do that if they don't have support from the manager. Um, but that, again, w- w- is what is how it should happen. And knowing their standard tasks every hour. So at some point, somebody's got meds to do. Somebody needs help turning. Yep. Somebody. Um, and, and, and I will say, let me just say this too. So let's say you know your patient assignment, your particular patient assignment, you're going to have a busy afternoon. Maybe you got to go to MRI with one patient, and then they're coming in to do a, a, a endoscopy procedure. or So you know your afternoon slammed, and let's say you want to be that first person who goes to lunch because you want to get a lunch that day. It, you can still check in real quick and be like, hey, I'm going to lunch because I've got this, this, and this done. Is there anything I can do for you right now? Mm-hmm. Because there is sometimes you know your afternoon is going to be slammed, and and you do want to, you know, get some nutrition. <laughs> so there's a proactive theme here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anticipate. And it's just hard as when you're new, but you get there, you start to become more proactive. The more proactive you are, the more you work together, the easier it is. It's not about you doing your own thing and, and being reactive. It's kind of a proactive team. It's proactive and kind of having the whole unit I mean, I always say, you know, my two patients are not just my two patients. Every patient in that unit is yeah. sort of my responsibility in a sense. And it's not about if you're going in to help somebody, or if you're titrate, if you're going to, hey, I notice you need this done. This is not an ego thing. This is not a, oh, they don't think I can't take care of my patient. It's a, th- we're all here to help out the patients throughout the shift. While you might be the primary nurse, that doesn't mean that other nurses can't help because that's not the point of it to like have like a... Nurses do ego. not get out of work on time. I, I, I mean, they just don't. <laughs> and traditionally, I mean, I, maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe in California they can or something. I don't. I don't know because they, oh, have, they, a they have a union. I mean, they, but like, I don't know. I no, mean, they have the union. It is. It is. I, it's a good day for me if I get out at seven thirty. Yeah. Oh I mean, my goodness, that is a great day. Yeah, and I think and I'm supposed to get out at seven fifteen <laughs> and have a thirty minute lunch and two fifteen minute breaks. 
Yeah, that doesn't happen. Nope, it doesn't. But and so part of it, I think is if we can help, you know, like you were saying, like if I know my f- colleague never goes to lunch until they have everything done and that never happens, you're going to lunch right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to watch your patients and I'm going to watch them well, but you're going to go to lunch right now. That way that someone else will do that for you. Oh, I have to say that about teamwork, though. If you're watching somebody's patient for them while they're off the floor for lunch or with another patient, like watch the patient. Actually watch them. Don't just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, f- I forgot about Listen them. for the alarms. Answer the call bell. Take them to the restroom. Mm-hmm. You know, if they need pain medicine, give them pain. You know, those kinds of things. It's it really is about sharing the responsibility. Yeah. And the, and the yes. more that we share with each other, the the smoother things will run. And I and I make a point that sometimes if I'm, let's say I'm watching out for another nurse, so technically I have four patients under my watch. Sound like a mama uh, Somebody bird. else comes to me and says, hey, can you watch my patients? I'll be like, hey, look, right now I'm watching, you know, so-and-so's patients. So no, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to take the responsibility of six patients, especially right. if people are really sick. Uh, it, anyway, I mean, but you kind of have to consider that too. It's a lot. It's a know lot. your limits. I mean, it's a big balance. To me, that sounds even more like just self-preservation because you get them their brain food out the door they're going to come back and be more efficient and and more on top of it anyway if they can actually think because they have calories in their brain right so you're doing (laughs) yourself a favor by helping them out yeah and and sending them to lunch and i do like how you just said a shared responsibility truly a nursing unit is a shared responsibility it's not everybody's silo doing their own thing with their own patients this is a shared responsibility we're all watching out for each other's patients um there's no such thing as that's not like something i can do because i mean yeah you have your primary nurse that has things that they should do but we should all be able to help each other out and if there's a call light on Mm-hmm. You, and you are available answer it even if it's not your patient mm-hmm. uh, an IV pump uh, you yeah. know like whatever it is you doing those simple things sometimes can make a huge difference. difference yeah and it's you know what this reminds me of is kind of like um marriage advice that I was given it's like you um wake up each day trying to fulfill the other person and do what you can for some for them and you and if both of you are doing that you both end up feeling very fulfilled and if you okay i'm going to walk onto my unit and i'm going to be the best nurse i can not just for my patients but for all the other patients and if i'm helping all my colleagues out and they're and they and i have this priority in my mind to help other people out and they do the same then we're all going to have a much better shift we're all going to have patients that are safely taken care of and we're not going to be as overwhelmed you're not going to feel alone and yeah because we're all helping each other out is an awful feeling it is especially in the midst of chaos yeah Mm -hmm. so anyone else have anything else to say (laughs) no i just kind of feel like we should summarize our main point somehow okay takes time right yes give yourself some grace it takes time to become a great team um, the nursing unit is a shared responsibility. Um, Need communication. Yes, communication and like not just you communicating to, communicating to other people, um, but asking other people if they need help. Um, um, learning personalities, taking some time to get to know the people around you and what their tendency are, tendencies are. Um, the consistent follow up. So if things aren't if they're gonna getting dropped, you know, or, you know, following up in a business like non personal, hey, can you get that done? Kind of tone, um, and having this self awareness and developing trust, and knowing that developing trust takes some time. Um, and and I th- and classic example of the uh, if you got an admission coming in, and you know, people all hands on deck for a few minutes to make sure that nurse is good to go, um, or if you know nurses got some discharges and some admissions kind of all hands on deck to help each other out because again it's a shared responsibility Um, self-awareness for you said where you're weak and where you need help but situational awareness for where other people may need help or where they're at yes Um, so kind of both ways of the awareness side of things yes so yeah i mean and, and encourage you as you're a new nurse and trying to just figure out how to just get through each shift you are going to have that tendency to look down and just want to get your stuff done But know that as you are developing as a nurse that you'll have to pick your head up and look around at the rest of the unit and other people and and kind of mesh into that. And and that's where teamwork really is. So it's important to get to that point and know that that's on the horizon. So, yeah. Attitude. Oh. Communal team attitude, right? Yes. Yes. Positive attitude. Shared responsibility. We are at war 
and we are an <laughs> army. <laughs> <laughs> that was my um, pre-war pep talk. <laughs> no? No? I don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, not that dramatic. Not, but. No. Have you guys seen, before we close, have you guys seen that... Um, uh, it was from something from a World War II movie of Hitler yelling at his um, uh, officers, and someone dubbed over it as um, a charge nurse yelling at her, oh, his no. or her um, unit of like, we have <laughs> five admissions, we're short three nurses, and it's like screaming. Oh, I it, think I did. See it that. is so <laughs> true and funny, and oh my gosh, I just like I identify with that. It's <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. I don't know if I should put it a link. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it. It's a little colorful. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why. It just reminded me of this pep talk of yeah, teamwork. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. A little colorful. But okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you guys for listening. Check out freshrn.com slash podcast. Oh, and another thing that we really, really want to encourage you guys to do is subscribe to the podcast. Um, that really helps out our podcast. And, and if you're enjoying it, please share it with other people. And another thing that really helps us out are reviews. Yeah. Please, mm-hmm. please write reviews. We would Tell love to what know you hear about. what you want to hear about, what you think. Guys, those reviews help so much. Um, as do subscribing and, and downloading. So we uh, we just appreciate you. And if, if you want a way to support the podcast, that is the absolute best way. And it's quick and it's free. So um, thank you guys so much and stay fresh. Damn girl, better hit the floor. All the other fellas better run for the door. Stop, drop, and roll with me. I-